Come on, y'all come ready? Because Jesus came ready. Will you say this with me? If you got a Bible with you, grab a hold of it. If you just got a smartphone or smart tablet, if you're looking at your Bible on that, grab a hold of it. If you don't have that, you can just point your hands up towards God, and we're just going to make a declaration over our life and get ready to receive the best we can. Amen? Let's say it like this. Say, Father God, we thank you for your word. For your word is a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path. Your word changes me from the inside out. I'm ready to receive, willing to obey your holy word in Jesus' name. Can we do one more? I want to teach you something tonight. I want you to say this. Say, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Let's try it one more time. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. That's Romans 1.16. There's your memory verse for the whole week. You can just declare that over your life, in your life, and through your life because the Word of God has all power, all authority, because the Word is Jesus. He manifested in the flesh, and he called himself Jesus, but in heaven he is known as the Word of God. Amen? I got a message for you tonight. I don't have a, I don't really have a, a PowerPoint. I don't have anything like that. Tonight's going to be a little bit unique, a little bit different. What I've got for you is I've got a word. I've got a word directly from God that's been processing and downloading in my spirit over the last few weeks, and it's just led up until today. I started talking about it last week and then Sunday night with some folks and just been marinating over it. I've taken, I'm not telling you this to bring attention to me because the time is over, but I'm telling you how serious I'm taking what God wants to do tonight. I've been fasting for the last three days. I've been preparing myself, setting myself aside, setting myself apart because I'm ready, and I want to be used of God because tonight God wants to break some chains. Tonight God wants to set some people free. Tonight God is going to heal people physically. He's going to heal people within. God tonight is going to set you loose and set you free in such a way. Tonight is going to be a night that we will remember, I believe, for the history of this church. Tonight will mark a night that I believe is the beginning of something new, a new wave, a new anointing, a new outpouring of His Spirit that is coming upon Reach Church and is going to touch this city and this greater region and we are going to do things that we would only dreamed of doing up until this point. We're going to do them in the streets and the highways and the byways and the workplaces in the neighborhoods within our families. We're going to see God move like never before. Romans 1.16 promises us that when we are not ashamed of the gospel then we can be used by the power of God. If I'm not ashamed of it, it is the power of God in my life and it can be the power of God through my life. Somebody say amen. Amen. So I want to just talk to you tonight about faith. I want to preach a message. The message is called by faith. That's as simple as it needs to get. By faith. What does that mean by faith? Faith is everything. Faith is the beginning of grace. Faith is the beginning of salvation. The Bible says that we only get grace through faith. So we must first have faith in God before we can even position ourselves in grace. Once we're in grace, we've been forgiven. Once we've been forgiven, we can be set free. Once we've been set free, then we can make a difference in our lives and in those around us. Faith is critical. Faith is needed. Faith is now, and we're going to look at it here in just a moment. I want to tell you just a couple things going down through before we read the main context of our scripture. I've got seven P's tonight. I'm going to rattle them off. I don't, won't have them up on the screen, but you can jot them down if you're taking notes. Number one is faith is a position. You have to take a position of faith. Faith is something that you place yourself in because faith is already within you. Jesus said that all of us have been given a measure of faith. We'll look at that in a minute. We all have been given faith, but we've got to position ourselves and our faith right. Matthew 21 verse 22 declares, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if there's the condition. There's one condition and one condition only to you receiving whatever you ask for, and it is this, if you have faith. So you've got to put yourself in the position of faith. And then to let faith work, you've got to do the purge. That's the second P. The purge, Mark 11, verses 22 through 24. And Jesus answered them and said, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt 
in their heart, but they believe. What they say will come to pass. It will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have already received it, and it will be yours. It's not about getting more faith. Jesus said that each and every one of us has been given faith at least as small as a mustard seed. We all have a a faith deposit living on the inside of us. Each and every one of us have been given faith by God. If, If you have said yes to Jesus, if you have declared that God is your God, then you have at least some measure of faith living on the inside of you. And if you've got just that little bit of faith, he said someone with a faith as small as a mustard seed could speak to the mountains to be cast into the seas. That's how faith works. That's how powerful faith really is. This monitor sounds a little bit weird, guys. Can you get a little bit more bass in it? This is, this is what faith is. This is what we have to understand and what we have to know that faith is the beginning of everything. And all that we have to do is just have that small of faith. But it's not a matter of just having that small of faith. It's a matter of getting rid of the doubt that is in our heart so that that little bit of faith can do the impossible. He said, listen to this, if you do this, if you, you call to the mountain to be taken up and thrown in the sea, it will be taken up and it will be done as long as as you do not doubt in your heart. So what we've always got to be doing, I've taught this before, but we're going to talk about it again. We've always got to be working on decreasing doubt while we increase faith. It's like decreasing your debt while you increase your income. All of a sudden, you've got lots of margin, right? So when we decrease doubt and we increase faith, all of a sudden we are sitting in a position where we are able to do some unbelievable, unexplainable, impossible things that we can only do when we do it in God. The third P is the portion. Faith is a portion. Romans 12 verse 3, for the grace, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, Not to think of themselves more highly than they ought to think, but think with sober judgment. Why? Because each have been given according a measure of faith that has been assigned to them from God. Each of us have been given a measure of faith. Every single one of us have some form of faith. And sometimes you feel like your faith is obsolete. It's not because you don't have it. It's because you've got more doubt than you got faith. So what you got to start doing is silencing the enemy and getting getting rid of doubt in your life so that you can release the faith that God has already placed within you. Number four is the praise. Faith is the praise to God. First Corinthians chapter two, verse five, that your faith may, may not rest in the wisdom of men, but instead in the power of God. Don't put your faith in man. Don't put your faith in me. I don't put my faith in you. We put our faith in God. We love one another. We can work together. We can do amazing things for the kingdom of God together. But my faith belongs in one place and one place only, and that is a security deposit inside of God's heart because he is the one to redeem me. He is the one that saved me. He's the one that bought me and brought me out of that muck and that mire and set my feet. Number five, faith is the purpose. Faith is the purpose for which we live by. Faith is the purpose purpose for which we walk by. First Corinthians chapter two and verse five, that your faith may not rest in man, but in God. And then here's second Corinthians five, verse seven, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Every step I take in this life, I take with faith. Every move I make, I make with faith. I don't do it by what I see. I don't do it by what I know. I do it by what God knows because he knows infinitely abundantly more than I could ever dream of. He knows my yesterday, my today, and my forever. He knows every single thing about me. He knows every single thing about my future. And God has already designed a perfect place and a perfect path for me to get to that perfect place. It's called destiny. And I'm on a journey to my destiny. And while I'm walking that journey, it's a faith walk all the way through. I can't look around me. I can't listen to the doubters. I can't hear the complainers. I can't can't tune in to those that are the naysayers. I can't listen to those that are the haters. What I've got to do is I've got to tune my heart dial into what Jesus told me, what Jesus promised me. When God gives me a word, he is faithful and just that he will finish that word. And I need to walk by faith and not by sight. Number six, 
But number seven, I'll give you the words now, and we're going to read them out of the same context of passage. Number six is faith is a process. And number seven is faith is the past. And I'll explain that when we get there. We're going to read from Hebrews chapter 11. We'll pull both of those scriptures out of Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to begin in verse 1, and I'm going to end when it's over. Okay? Listen to this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction. The King James would say the evidence. This is the ESV. It says the conviction of things not seen. I may not have seen it with my natural eyes, but I've seen it with my spiritual eyes. I've got conviction in my heart. I've been convicted not in a good way, in a bad way, but in a good way by a good, good God. He has convicted me with with, with, with people and people places and and presence and and God is going to do things that I can only dream of doing but he's going to do them in and through my life listen to this now for by and let me back up the other part of this this key is faith is now faith isn't just for yesterday and faith is not just for tomorrow but faith is even for our right now faith is for each and every one of us in our current situation For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word word of God so that it was seen and not been, been able to be made out of things that are visible. Listen to this now. By faith, Abel offered to God a more, a more sacrificial offering than Cain through which he was condemned as righteous. He's commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. He was not found because he was taken by God. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having having to please God. He was a man that pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, that he rewards those who seek him. So I'll give you a little bit of side note here. How do you draw near to God? It tells us right there. Have faith in God. Seek him. Believe he exists. And believe he rewards those who find him. By faith, Noah was warned by God concerning the events Yet to be seen in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household by the condemned the world and became the heir and the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed. He was called to go out into a place that he was to receive an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going, but by faith, he went and he lived in the land of promise, in the foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that God had declared would be the foundation whose designer of it himself and builder himself was God Almighty. By faith, Sarah received power to conceive even when she was past the age since she considered him faithful, God faithful, who had promised therefore she was given that child and she was brought in to God's covenant. Verse 13, then all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them. Having seen them. So they all died in their faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them. You know what this means? What is the promise? We're going to talk about it at the end of this chapter. Jesus is the promise. They all were building the way to Jesus, each and every one of them. So this is the first step of how faith works. Faith is a process, and this is what that process looks like, is I first got to see it. If I can see it, not with my natural eyes, but if I can see it with my heart, if I can dream about it, if I can see a vision of it, if I can have a glimpse of it, if I can see it, then I can have it. Because God's promised it. So if I see it, the second step of that process is to say it. Not to be a coward, not to be fearful of those that are around you like Joseph. Just be bold and declare what God has showed you because it's going to happen no matter what they do. No matter what they say. And then once I say it, 
I've got to seize it. I've got to grab a hold of it. I've got to do something about it because faith is belief in action. And lastly, I've got to share it. I've got to tell the world what God has done in my life through faith. Then, listen to this. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and who had received the promises, was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. The one and only son that he was going to bring forth a nation through, and God is challenging him and testing him to sacrifice. And it was by faith that God forbid that to go, go through. In verse 20, by faith Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith Jacob, when, when dying, blessed each of his sons, of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, he was hidden for, in a basket for three months by his parents because they saw a child who was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's threats and plans. By faith, Moses, when he was grown, he refused to be called the son of a Pharaoh. He should instead to be chose to be mistreated when the people of God saw that, that they were, they were fleeing in the pleasures of their sins. Moses was the one that delivered them. By faith, he left Egypt. He led them through. By faith, he kept the Passover. By faith, the people crossed through the Red Sea. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, Rah Rahab the prostitute did not perish, but was the, what went with those against those who were disobedient, and she was given a friendly welcome in God's hands. And in the more, listen to this, for the time shall fall unto me of Gideon. He said, I don't have time to go through all of these things individually, but I'm going to tell you, it was by faith that Gideon, that Gideon fought with 300 and won a war against thousands. It was by faith that Samson would snap those chains and say one more time. It was by faith that, 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 that Jephthah would be used to be a deliverer of God. It was by faith that David would be the warrior of God. It was by faith all the way through. We read all the way through Hebrews chapter 11, and we see these two words, by faith. Number seven leads us to this, the past. What do you mean? Why should we look in the past? Because when you're uncertain of what God will do for your future, you just got to look back at what God has already done. And that builds faith in your life when you know that God has done these mighty things and God recorded it in this book and in this chapter that we would refer to at times as the hall of faith. And in verse 39 it says, And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better for us, his name is Jesus. That apart from us, they should not be made perfect. By faith, these men did incredible things. It was by faith that that woman with the issue of blood pressed through the crowd around her, knowing that they were mocking her, making fun of her, that she was an outcast of society. But it was by faith that she pressed in and she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus and virtue left his body and she was healed. It was by faith that those three men loved their friends so much that they climbed a roof and busted a hole in it to lower their friend down just to be in the presence of God. It was by faith that the man with the wither hand would stretch his hand out and he would be touched and he would be healed. It was by faith that blind Bartimaeus would call out to Jesus when he was passing by and said, don't pass me by anymore. I want healed. And Jesus said, bring him to me. What is it that you want? He said, I want my sight back. And he healed him. And he said, because of your faith, it was by your faith, Bartimaeus, that you have been healed. It was by faith that Jesus went through what he called himself his passion. The Bible says that after his passion, he showed himself for 40 days, teaching his disciples the principles of the kingdom of God. It was faith that carried Jesus through that crucifixion through the cross. It was faith that carried his disciples through 
It was by faith that those very disciples would huddle together somewhat in fear, but somewhat in faith, wondering and not knowing for sure is Jesus' words going to come true. But they stood faithful to it for 50 days in the upper room praying, and then all of a sudden, like a tornado, a a rushing mighty wind, the Holy Spirit came, breathed upon them like tongues of fire, dancing on them, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they began to demonstrate the power of the living God. Somebody say, by faith. faith. It was by faith that that man at the pool of Bethesda was dipped into that water and healed. It was by faith that that blind man in the city of doubt that Jesus took out of the city of doubt. He took him out of his doubt and brought him to a place where he could speak and, and declare healing in his life. And it was by faith that he saw men walking like sticks. They looked like trees. And then Jesus kept praying, and by faith, the man received this full healing. There's a history to this church deeper than the five years that we've been in existence. There's a spiritual heritage to reach church that we brought to Austin, Texas. There's a man named Smith Wigglesworth. He was one of the greatest revivalists of all time. He was used by God to wake people from the dead. He was used by God to heal all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. He was used by God to shake cities and nations for the name of Jesus. And there was one day that he was reading the newspaper over a cup of coffee, and he was reading up the obituaries, and he saw that a young man had died, and God said, it wasn't his time. Smith Wigglesworth said, excuse me. He said, it wasn't his time. Go pray for him and bring him back to life. Can you imagine the faith that it would take to do that? Smith Wigglesworth walked into the, walked into the funeral home. This is a true story documented in, in Associated Press newspapers. He walked into the funeral home. He's, he said, excuse me, but this man is not supposed to be dead. He grabbed the man out of the coffin, and he was a big man, Smith Wigglesworth was, and he pinned the man against the wall, and he said, in the name of Jesus Christ and by faith, I say, live. He let the man go, and the corpse fell face first to the ground. I'd be out. It didn't work. (laughs) Now they're going to kill me. He picked the man back up with a gasp and the shouts all around him to leave the man alone. He pinned him against the wall and he said, I don't think you heard what I told you. I said in the name of Jesus Christ, live. He let the man go and he fell face first to the ground. He picked him up a third time. He said, this is the third and final time as Jesus laid in the tomb for three days and came out alive. So now you will come out of this situation alive. I say in the name of Jesus and by faith, live. And breath came back into that man's body. And a creative miracle took place all over his entire body. And that man walked out of that funeral home with Smith Wigglesworth that day. Smith Smith Wigglesworth then discipled and laid hands on a man named Dr. Lester Summerall, an American from Indiana, who was a great missionary and a great apostolic evangelist all over the world. He laid hands on him, and he declared that same anointing to go from him on to, on to Dr. Summerall. Dr. Summerall was such a man of faith, he was down in the jungles of the Philippines. He was preaching the gospel, going from village to village with nothing to eat, nothing to wear, but the clothes that were on his back and living by faith with every step he took. He got malaria. He got so sick he couldn't move. He was all by himself. He had no way to call for help. This is a little bit before cell phones. He was laying in the middle of the jungle about to die. And the Holy Spirit sold him. Do you operate in the gift of healing? He said, yes, I do, Lord. He said, then lay hands on yourself and declare yourself healed. He laid hands on himself. The fever left immediately. The sweats left immediately. He got up and he walked 13 miles to the next village the same day. When he got to that village, this is a crazy story. When he got to that village... They put him up in a hut. He told him what he had come to do. They were in the deep witchcraft. He put him, they put him up in a hut at night. It was hot. It was steamy. It was muggy. It was humid. 100% immunity. I think he said it was like 95 degrees outside. He's in that hut. He's sweating. He's sweating like crazy. He's got this little cot in the corner of the hut. 
he gets ready to, to lay down. He, he, he reads his Bible. He lays down. As soon as he shuts his eyes, all of a sudden, he said the room grew as cold as ice. He could see his breath crystallizing in front of his face. And his bed started to shake. And it shook all the way out to the center of the room. And he knew immediately what he was dealing with. He was dealing with the principality, the demon that was over that region, that was over that witchcraft. He knew exactly what he was dealing with. He stood up. He said, devil, I'm not afraid of you. He went and opened up the window and he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to go. And all of a sudden he said, Pfft. the room went back to hot and steamy. Everything went back to normal. But when he turned back around, he realized his bed was still in the middle of the floor. So he walked back to the window and he opened it up and he said, hey, devil. Get back in here. <laughs> Telling you what he said, true story. He said, all of a sudden, the room grew as cold as ice all over again. He said, put that bed back where you found it. That which you take it from me, God will restore, put it back. He said, that bed shook right back over the corner. He said, you can go now. This is the kind of faith that these men walked in. Yeah. Dr. Lester Summerall, he mentored a man named Rod Parsley, one of my pastors, my spiritual dad. He's based in Columbus, Ohio. He mentored him. He, he discipled him. He led him. I've seen so many miracles. I remember when Melissa and I first got to World Harvest Church. It was one of the very first services we were in. They were called a miracle healing and victory service where they came once a month together to declare miracles, to declare healings, and declare victories over their lives. That night, a man came in in a wheelchair. He had been on the front page of the Columbus Dispatch. He'd been struck, the, 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 the headlines of the newspaper, 13 years prior, had read, motorcyclist hit by locomotive. He tried to beat the train across the tracks and he didn't get there. He was paralyzed from the waist down completely and mostly paralyzed in his upper torso. He was, he was ridden to a, to a bed into a wheelchair. He was on so many different medications, it was not even possible to count. He came in that night. Rob Parsley stood on the platform. I'll never forget it. He looked down at him, and he said, that's not God's plan for your life. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're going to stand tonight. Now stand in faith. And everybody's just waiting, you know, because that's something that's going to happen or not going to happen. The man stood immediately to his feet, 13 years bound in a wheelchair. He ran up on the platform, and he immediately began dancing and shouting to Jesus. That night, we saw so many miracles, so many healings, that it was impossible to count. Why am I telling you these new stories? Why am I telling you these more current stories? Because faith never dies. Faith never leaves. Faith always goes on. And that's the faith that I was born in. That's the faith that I was birthed in in ministry. And that's the faith that is running through the DNA of Reach Church. And I've come tonight to declare in your life, by faith, you will be healed. By faith, you will be delivered. By faith, you will be set free. By faith in God, not in man, not in what man can do, not in what you can do, not in what I can do, not even what we can do together, but it is by him and him alone that that power of faith is evident. It's here today. It's saturated this place. And I'm going to ask everybody right now, let's just stand to our feet. And I want to just encourage each and every one of you, whoever you are, wherever you are in life, whatever you're going through, if you need a healing in your body, Tonight's the night. By faith, we will stand with you. By faith, we will declare. By faith, we will receive. If you need to be set free, maybe you, you're addicted to something. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe it's been, oh, when I go through what Jesus said that the Holy Spirit has anointed him to do. He said he's anointed me to preach the gospel to those that are needed, that need it the most, that want it the most. He said, I've been anointed to be able to, to, to heal those that have had a broken heart. Maybe you're going through the worst time of your life. Maybe your marriage or relationship is on the rocks. Maybe you've just been through a divorce. I don't know what it is, but you and God know exactly what it is. He said, I've come to set the captives free, those that are bound by sin, those that are bound by infirmities, those that are bound by sickness. He said, I came to open up blind eyes. He came to physically heal people. You say, man, I don't know if I believe in healing. If you need one, you better start believing right about now. Then he said, I've been anointed. I've been called. I've been touched by my father. 
through his spirit to set at liberty those who have been abused. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe it's been physically, mentally, sexually, I don't know. But you know and God knows. Maybe you've never been fully healed over that. And the last part he said in the preached the acceptable jubilee year of the Lord. And that's the year that we're in. He came to preach about this year. He came to talk about every 50 years how he's going to pour out a special favor, a special blessing. So I'm going to ask right now if we can just bow our head, close our eyes just for a moment. I want you to strip away any hindrances, any doubt, any pride that would get in the way. I want you just to focus right now. What do you need? Where are you at? What are you facing? Is it impossible? We serve a God that does the impossible. Is it overdue? We serve a right now God. Has it been holding you back? We set the chain. We serve the chain breaker. We serve the one whose anointing breaks the yokes of bondage. If you're here today and you need a healing in your body, you need to be set free from something. You need restoration. Maybe your old life is knocking at your door. Maybe it's the choices you made, the things you've done that you're still encountering, you're still experiencing this day, then today's your day. Maybe it's an infirmity. Maybe it's a chronic sickness that just holds you back in life, weighs you down, makes your knees feel like they're going to buckle and just give up at any moment. Faith is now. Faith is here. Faith is yours. Faith is ours. Faith is the beginning of everything that we need in God. By faith tonight. How many of you would raise your hand and say, Pastor, I need prayer. I need you to stand with me. You know, I don't know what it is. You know what it is. But just lift your hand up nice and high in the air. Come on. It's almost the whole place. Thank you, Jesus. 